Well, uh, thank you everyone and welcome to Money 2020 and thank you the Money 2020 folks for putting on a terrific conference here. This is actually my third time coming to Money 2020 now and um, I can tell you for the last three years every time I would come here the cab drivers that bring you from the airport to the hotel they always ask you what do you do for a living? And I'd tell them I work in mobile payments. And so that's cool. Can you explain to me what that is? And I'd go through a whole diatribe about what mobile payments are and how they work and how you tap your phone. Well, this time when I got off at McLaren and I got in a cab to go to the, come to the conference, the guy turns around and sure enough, he asked me, what do you do for a living? I go, I work in mobile payments. He goes, oh, like Apple Pay. <laughs> Like, yeah, I like Apple Pay, thank you. Well, let me just start with a little bit of our journey. <laughs> so our journey started actually back in 2005. It started with, uh, with Verizon, Chase, AT&T, and Nokia, when they enabled the, the Phillips Center down in Atlanta to do the first mobile payments test uh, with, a, with a Nokia phone. And from there, in 2010, we founded ISIS. If, uh, if we only knew back then what we know now. <laughs> but we figured out the strategy. And we said, we need to go open. We need an open platform that everybody can participate in. And we signed agreements with Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and Discover to leverage their tokenization technologies, even back in 2011. And then we took that open model and we brought it to life in Austin and Salt Lake City in 2012. And then, one year later, almost to the day, we took it national with over 50 blue chip partners. And today, we have millions of customers who have downloaded millions of cards on our app, and we're just getting started. One thing, though, that has not changed in those four years are the core principles we built this company on. We believe a mobile payment system needs to be secure, it needs to be private, and it needs to be incredibly simple. And it needs to be built on choice. Consumers should be able to choose whatever method they want to pay with, and merchants should be able to choose whatever method they want to receive. And just so we are clear, for SoftCard, choice means no exclusivity, ever. We've also learned, though, that igniting mobile payments requires solving this four-sided puzzle, a very complex space. First, you need a mobile phone that you can make a payment with. Second, you need a merchant that you can go use that phone at. Third, you need a bank account that you can put in that phone. And then where those three circles intersect at the very middle there, that's the consumer. And you need a compelling consumer value proposition to make this all work. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about what we've learned over the last two years being in market. But before I do that, I got to thinking, you know, it's a, a few weeks from now is Thanksgiving. And I started thinking, well, what am I thankful for? Right? And I looked back at this past year. I said, there's definitely one thing that I'm thankful for. I am certainly thankful for our new name. <laughs> but I'm also thankful for these guys. You may ask yourself why. Because for the last two years, we and our partners have worked towards a simple vision to give the consumer a way to securely and safely shop, pay, and save with their mobile phone. But we faced an industry that's been fragmented, confused, and riddled with inaction. Apple Pay has been the ignition. It has gotten rid of the fragmentation. We can all now bet on NFC. It has gotten rid of the confusion. We know that tapping with your phone is the simplest and easiest way to pay. And the time for inaction has passed. We can all move on and we can build this industry together. But I'm also thankful for the other 60% of America. Because for the other 60% of America, soft card is the Android way to pay. And we are now on the broadest array of devices anywhere in the world. But I'm also thankful for something else. I'm thankful for all the Windows phone owners out there because for now, now SoftCard is also the Windows way to pay. 
and you'll hear more about that as we go on. But starting today, we are uploaded on the Windows platform. And by the end of this year, we will be on over 100 different devices across multiple operating system platforms. No one else in the world has ever done this before, delivered a mobile wallet with a consistent experience across multiple platforms. And I'm also thankful for our customers, because they've been able to use SoftCard at a lot of great merchants. They've been able to use them at these merchants, at these merchants, and at these merchants, and hundreds more and growing by the day. But you know, a little bit of reality check. This industry is just getting started. For the average consumer today, the odds of being able to make an NFC transaction are somewhere in the range of 5 to 10%. But that is going to change radically over the next two years. By next year, we estimate by, you'll at least have 25% coverage on NFC terminals. And within 24 months, you'll be over 50% coverage. And within three to five years, you will exceed 75% coverage on NFC terminals. This is going to happen, and it's going to happen a lot faster than anyone's predicting right now. But there's one question that remains, and we started with, is will the consumer use this? Does it matter? And what have we learned after being two years in market on this? Well, here's what we've learned. At first, the consumer will use it because it is cool. And I think we've all been there. The first time you've taken your phone, you tap it up against the terminal, the look of amazement at the clerk on the other side saying, wow, how did you do that? How did you deliver? How did you just pay? I, I don't understand this. But cool only goes so far. And what we've learned is cool eventually gets cold. And what consumers want is they want more. They want their wallets to do more for them. They want them to help them deliver their loyalty cards and make it seamless. They want the offers that they have in their wallet. They want them delivered easily to there. They want more than payments, and they want it in a simple, integrated experience. So what we did is we took the NFC technology, and we developed an additional technology alongside of it, which we call SmartTap. And SmartTap gives us the ability to deliver loyalty and offers instantly right along with a payment. So for example, with Coca-Cola, you can load your My Coke Rewards card into the soft card wallet and tap at any of 50,000 different vending machines, and it'll automatically deliver your loyalty card to that vending machine. No more thinking, no more fumbling, no more confusion. You, know, you can also deliver offers. So for example, with Toys R Us, if you have a Toys R Us offer, Toys R Us can deliver a one-to-one -one offer to the consumer. They can select that offer and then just, again, deliver it with one simple tap at the point of sale. But we went one step further. We said, while it should be also about the merchant community, and there's been an enormous amount of talk about tokenization for the banking community, what we did is we developed a token for the merchant community. We call it a wallet token. And what that does is every time you tap the phone, we deliver a wallet token to the merchant that is a unique identifier that doesn't have any PII or information about the consumer, but allows the merchant to have a one-to-one -one conversation back to that consumer, regardless whether or not they've enrolled in a loyalty program or not. So an example of this is what USA Technologies did with us. USA Technologies took our wallet token and made every fifth vend free. So what that means is consumers can just walk up to a vending machine, tap their soft card wallet, and every fifth time, they can get a free vend. That's what our wallet should do. Our wallet should surprise and delight, and they should bring together both the payments and the merchant side of the community. And on top of that, we've been busy, and we haven't talked about this much, but we have deployed SmartTap at over 150,000 locations in the United States. This technology is prime now to take off and deliver an incredible experience for the consumer. But here's the question. Does it make a difference? Does it matter? Well, here's what we've learned. If you look at the general activation rate of a consumer, it's about 7%. It mirrors the average penetration rate of terminals in the United States. Cool only goes so far. You have to do more. But when a consumer goes into the wallet and looks at offers and loyalty, their activation rate goes up to 20%. But when you can deliver an instant reward, an instant benefit right at the point of sale, give them something that they want right then, the activation rate on the wallet goes to 45% right 
when we see consumers use SmartTap. It is clear that consumers want more than payments. They want their wallets to deliver offer and loyalty in a consistent, easy way. And we've proven it and seen it in market. And then what we see is once you go through Cool, consumers engage in the offer and loyalty side, the wallet becomes habitual. And here's what we've seen over the last six months. We've seen a 40% month over month growth rate in consumers using the wallet. And I will tell you, only 20% of the time of that is devoted to actually making a payment. The other 80%, they're going in there to check on offers, to check on loyalty, to check on the balance on their card. They're using the wallet for other things. So what we're seeing is a phenomenon, what we call a mobile first approach. We see consumers walk into a store and pull out their phone, look to pay, and if they can't pay, they go back to their wallet on the other side. That's the power of this. When you can bring a card to life, that makes an enormous difference in the consumer's behavior, and this is what you're about to see. But let's just take a look at this. Right now, back to our three circles, the odds of being a consumer at the middle here is pretty low. Over the next 18 to 36 months, those circles will converge and the odds will become much greater that you can do it. So what I wanna do is I wanna take a little trip back with you to Salt Lake City. If you remember, we launched in Salt Lake City 24 months ago. At that point in time, we took Salt Lake City and we pushed it about two years up the time continuum. We went out there, we worked with many of you in this room to terminalize Salt Lake City, to drive up the density. We went out, we drove awareness of the mobile wallet up. In fact, today, awareness of mobile wallets in Salt Lake are about 70% compared to 30% for the rest of the United States. So what are the Salt Lake City users doing and what are we seeing in Salt Lake after two years and how are they responding to the mobile wallet? Well, here's what we're seeing. Versus the national average, Salt Lake City users are two and a half times more payment active than the rest of the United States. Their likelihood of using the wallet is 50% higher in any given week or any given month. And on top of that, they are three and a half times more likely to view an offer and they are four times more likely to put a loyalty card in the wallet. If Salt Lake City is any indication of where the rest of the United States is going, this is indeed going to be great for the US consumer. And those circles are even gonna to come together further. And by our estimation, within the next three to five years, you will be more likely to be able to pay with your mobile phone first and go to your wallet second. So just to wrap this all up, the foundation is, place, is in place now. Uh, NFC is now for commerce. Merchants are coming. Banks are moving thanks to Visa and MasterCard and all the great work they've done on tokenization. And the consumer value proposition has become clear. Bringing a card to life is definitely going to work. So the question for all of us in this room now is, are you going to watch it happen? Are you going to wonder what happened after this is all done? Or are you going to make it happen? I surely hope the latter. And if you want to make it happen, give us a call. Thank you. And I'd like to turn it over to Carmen Wenkoff. Thanks, Mike. Good morning, everyone. So I work uh, at Subway, and I'm really pleased to be here this morning and share the stage with Mike a little bit. And I'm going to talk to you about three things that we've launched. I know Mike would probably want me to talk just about SoftCard. Please. So I'm going to talk <laughs> a little bit about that, but uh, we've got a lot of things going, so I'm really pleased to be here uh, on stage. And I just I want to really acknowledge uh, Mike and the SoftCard team because it's been a long journey, and this is probably the first time that it's been enjoyable for you. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, it's been a rough, rocky road in the past. So, so let me go through this uh, really quickly. We've launched three things. The first thing I'm going to talk about is a soft card launch. This has been a journey for us as well, too. Uh, this wasn't done overnight. Uh, in fact, I think uh, it's been over two and a half years or so since the team was trying to engage with us. And, and to be quite honest, the first time we had a meeting, my intention was, was to blow them off in the first uh, hour. <laughs> and the reason I didn't do that is really their team. And uh, what impressed me so much was Mike, uh, Jim Stapleton, and the whole leadership team that came. They really understood payments. They understood data. They understood the merchant's concern. And, and the nice thing about this is two and a half years later, we're still yeah. dealing with the same people. It hasn't flipped. And so uh, that really caught our attention. And uh, I remember in that first meeting, you know, understanding the challenge in front, talking about NFC and the fact that 
the world had already written that off or as big question marks. Uh, the fact that we weren't terminalized with NFC. Um, and I remember talking to you, Mike, and saying, do you realize we're 100% franchised and we've got 26,000 <laughs> locations in the United States? And so uh, uh, the team has not shied away from the challenge. So over the course of two years, we did a lot of work integrating the solution. And as Mike mentioned, we launched in Salt Lake City in a trial earlier in the year. And that was a couple hundred locations. And our goal with that was not to prove that we can have the majority of our transactions with tap and pay. It was to make sure that our customers liked it, that it was possible to train our sandwich artist easily, and that it was uh, fast. And, and so uh, all of that proved, uh, proved itself out. Uh, so it was largely an operational test, and we surveyed our customers, we sur surveyed our stores, and it all came back very, very positive. And so we geared up to launch. We terminalized our restaurants. We're about to launch, and I, <laughs> we sent all the materials to the restaurants, and then the rebranding uh, effort kind of slowed everything down a little bit. It was the right move, and I acknowledge the company again for, for, for taking a step back and, and doing the right thing uh, with that. So at the end of the day, we're, we're delighted to be w with SoftGuard. It's active now in over 25,000 restaurants, uh, and, uh, and we're excited to offer that. And as, as Mike said, especially to the Android customers, is a fantastic option. Now, we also uh, announced or uh, working with Apple Pay, and we we're really happy to work with Apple on this uh, during the launch and to support it now going forward. And I don't have to say much about Apple Pay. I think it's been talked about in every single session <coughs> here. Uh, it's been the buzz of the conference. And you know what excites me the most about Apple Pay is the consumer education. You know, we've got for the first time, and I've been at this for 15 years looking for mobile payments to finally be realized. And overnight, we've got millions and millions of customers who will understand how easy it is to pay with their phone for the first time. And to me, that's what Apple brings to the table, and it is fantastic for the industry. Um, so it settles a lot of questions, and now we can move forward. And, and it, it, it's no small thing that Mike mentioned Apple in his presentation, and I think you know we're direct competitors at this point. But the one thing they have in common is they both want to do it right. They want to nail the customer experience, and they want to make sure it's a completely secure solution. So we're delighted to partner with them as well, too, and, uh, and bring that to market in, our, in all of our US restaurants. Now, the third thing we've launched uh, was our own app. And we haven't talked about this much. We launched it quietly. It's a soft roll, uh, and we're, but we're, we're really excited about this. It does several new things for us. So it gives the third way to pay with your phone in store. Uh, but it also allows customers to uh, download the app, build orders, and send, the, send their orders into the restaurants remotely, as well as paying for them. And so we're rolling this out now, um, iPhone and, and Android. Um, and it's uh, really going to revolutionize our business uh, going forward. So that's a lot of things that we're introducing at once. This is a, this is a slide I show our franchisees. You know, we talk about it wasn't so many years ago that we were using electronic cash registers and a separate terminal device that dialed out every single time we had a credit card transaction. It's amazing how technology has transformed our business. So now we're looking at internet-based transactions that are fully integrated into the point of sale. If there's a void, you can look at integrated video surveillance to, to take a closer look at that transaction. It's, there's so many things going on, real-time alerts and reporting. It's really transforming our business. But if you think about it, a sandwich shop, Subway franchisees, uh, it's not necessarily the business they got into. So it's challenging incorporating all of this at one time. And if you think, we've just introduced three new ways to pay in store in the last two months, and, and, a, and a new way to order outside of the restaurant for the first time and to pay remotely. That's a lot of innovation going through the pipe at once. And so we're in a stage right now, and that's why we're not uh, uh, blowing the trumpet around things like our app, is we want to make sure the customer experience is right. And so we're in the process of rolling it out. We're training locations on how to take these different form of payments. When a customer says, I want to pay with a phone, 
In our situation, it could be one of three things right now, and it will probably be more going forward. And so it's not going to be perfect, uh, but our quest is to make it a perfect experience for the customer, and we're well uh, along the way. And the nice thing about this technology is that it finally speaks to our store employees, the sandwich artists. They know these devices. I guess that's not a phone, but they know phones, and they, they understand this really quickly. So it's a quick, quick learning curve, and they're excited that they can, they can do something cool in the restaurants. So I'm just going to uh, wrap it up in a minute. This is probably my most important point, and it's the, it's the most boring point uh, that I'll bring up as well, too. But I'm, I've actually, in the different sessions here, I've been concerned about only hearing about a lot of questions about EMV. Um, and there's not enough emphasis, in my view, on the total holistic security solutions that are required. In store, it's EMV tokenization, end-to-end -end, uh, encryption are critical. But when we talk about bringing payments to the mobile space, it's critical that so many other factors are taken into account. I talked about getting you know, an a in-store payment with loyalty. There's about 16 different hops in our, in our architecture that's got to go through, and it's got to touch about six internal and external parties. And it's critical to get the equation right. And there's a lot of startups here. There's a lot of investors. Um, looking at companies here, and this is a factor which needs to be taken seriously or it's going to hurt the entire industry. So, um, so I'm, I'm going to wrap it up with that and just note that what we're up to next is all about continuous improvement of the customer experience. Payments, digital payments has opened the door, and there's a lot of layers onto that, and we look forward to delivering that to our customers going forward. So thanks very much. We're out of time, and uh, appreciate your time and appreciate you advancing the industry going forward in a secure way. All right, thank you.